The classic cause of gonarthrosis is often malalignment of the leg. Bow legs, for example, often lead to osteoarthritis of the knee because this causes an overload of the inner knee joint and the cartilage is then damaged by the high force peaks. The diagnostics for osteoarthritis of the knee are actually the same as normal diagnostics for orthopedic conditions. First, the anamnesis. The patient explains where it hurts when it hurts, how the pain presents itself. Then the patient undresses down to their underwear and the axis is inspected. This is followed by the clinical exam, a mobility exam. Is there a knee contusion? Is there a loss of joint contour? After the clinical exam, imaging techniques follow, the first being an X-ray diagnosis. The monitor shows an example of gonarthrosis. You can see that the medial joint space is significantly decreased, while the lateral joint space still looks good. The goal of treating osteoarthritis of the knee is the same as any treatment. I want the patient to show few to no symptoms, and that's the goal. To do this, I have to balance conservative and operative therapy to achieve the goal of a pain-relieved patient as much as possible. Firstly, I use the Agilium Free Step for young patients who don't have time for an operation, who don't want an operation, or where I can get a better idea when the medial joint space is unloaded and the forces are directed into the center of the knee, which is an improvement, of whether there is pain relief. This indicates to me that I might be able to help the patient with repositioning surgery or with a partial knee replacement. Secondly, I use it for patients who don't want surgery. And this is what's great about orthopedic therapy. It's fully reversible. So if a patient experiences limitations, I can remove the brace and everything is fine again. But the patients were very satisfied with it. I was amazed because my first series with the Agilium Free Step was actually patients I had intended to perform prosthetic surgery on and around half of them have not had an operation yet. I find that really amazing. I tested all aspects of the brace, from top to bottom. The advantages of the innovative Agilium Free Step brace can clearly be attributed to the fact that it is an ankle-foot orthosis. You might not believe it at first, but compliance is very high with an ankle foot orthosis. There's no interference. Whereas there is often interference with a knee brace. It has to be worn under the trousers or skirt where everyone can see it and compliance is poor. I've seen this time and time again with my patients. But with an ankle foot orthosis like the Agilium Free Step, compliance is actually very, very good. There are secondary conditions that can be better treated with an ankle foot orthosis like the Agilium Free Step. I'm thinking of venous insufficiency, swelling in the legs or lymphoedema, for example. From a technical orthopedic standpoint, I can't treat these well with a knee brace. It doesn't tend to fit properly. And what's great is that when I use ground reaction forces with an ankle foot orthosis, it fits better, especially for patients with venous insufficiency or lymphoedema. Yes, I am satisfied, and I was amazed at first that it worked. I read the scientific data. Professor Blumentritt and Dr. Schmaltz did very good work with gait analysis studies. I then understood why around half of external sole wedging don't work, because the forces in the ankle are simply absorbed. And this is the precise indication for the Agilium free step to simply bypass this force absorption and then allow forces to better act upon the knee joint via the lateral support element on the lower leg. And I've been waiting for something like this because the compliance is simply better. Even if it seems a bit odd at first to treat knee osteoarthritis with an ankle foot orthosis, but the biomechanics are clearly in favor of this and they clearly support this principle.